This screencast will extend your knowledge of performing single step basic calculations in Mathematica to combining them to perform more complicated calculations. So let's start with the simplest of one step calculations. Here I'm working out 2% interest compounded over 8 years. If I'm going to move forward with this calculation I need to be able to refer back to this result. The way to do this in Mathematica is to store the result within a variable. The syntax for this is to give the name of our variable which we have chosen, the equal sign and the calculation whose result we wish to store. If we evaluate this the symbol compound rate now takes on the value of 1.17 and any time we use it for the remainder of this session it will be taken to have that value. So for example here I'm taking that value and multiplying by 600 and storing the result of this computation in a new variable called capital which we can reuse in the same way. There is no limit to the number of such variables you can create but the variable names do follow some rules. First of all it's important to realize that they're case sensitive so if I change the capitalization of the variable name it will be treated as a completely different variable and in this case one which has as yet no value. You can use any combination of numbers and letters that starts with a letter. So for example the variable x1 is distinct from the variable x or x2 and you can use long variable names that are more descriptive of their meaning and there's no limit to the length of a variable name. You can also use other letter like forms such as the Greek alpha which is distinct from the variable a. Variable names however cannot contain any Mathematica operator. For example the underscore has a particular meaning within Mathematica and so this would not be a valid variable name. You may have noticed that there was no need to declare a variable before I started using it. I simply assign a value to it. So there's no need to allocate memory or to declare the type of a variable and indeed in the examples above some of the variables have contained real numbers and some integers. Any kind of data can be stored in a variable without having to pre-declare it. For example the results of a symbolic computation. Here this entire symbolic expression has been stored in the variable result and just as in the previous example it's available for reuse whenever the symbol result in this case appears. So here we're taking the derivative of this integral. If you reuse a variable name within an assignment the previous value that was assigned to result is discarded and this new value is assigned. So any further uses of the result symbol will refer to this answer and not the previous one. Other kinds of data that you might assign to variables include image data. So for example we can store a plot within a variable and perhaps another plot and now when we refer to these variable names we're actually referring to the pictures and we can show the two images together. It can be very useful to see the progress of your calculations one step at a time but sometimes you want to put the steps together. Let's look at an example. Here we're taking some data and we can store data just like any other object in a variable in Mathematica. Here we're going to sort that data and finally we'll reverse the output of that result to get the reverse sorted data. Now here I'm not particularly interested in seeing these intermediate steps so what I may wish to do is to suppress the intermediate results and the way to do this in Mathematica is to terminate an expression with a semicolon character. Now when I do this calculation the calculation is performed, the data is stored in the variable but no result is returned and likewise let's do that to the second step and the third step. So now we get all three steps performed but the only result we see is after the final step and we could perhaps make this neater still by taking these three cells here and merging them into a single cell and now I only have to evaluate one cell and all three steps will be performed. If you place this semicolon character after the very last line of the input then no output will be returned at all. To make this useful you'll typically want to store the result so that you do have access to it later. The semicolon character within multiple lines of input also performs a second important role. It indicates where one statement ends and the next begins so there's no ambiguity about perhaps this statement being multiplied by this one. 
and so it should always be used when you have multiple statements in a single cell. The notebook interface makes it very easy to repeat calculations. So let's take, for example, as a final step to this calculation, taking the first two elements. Now let's suppose we wanted to try these sequence of steps, but with different values. I can simply go back and edit within the document a new value and repeat the calculations by selecting all of the necessary cells and re-evaluating them. And the sequence of steps is performed with the new input data. As your notebooks become more involved, you will also find a convenient menu item, Evaluate Notebook, which will evaluate all of the steps in the entire document. As well as giving you the ability to build up more complicated calculations, it also allows you to break down your computations to make them easier to understand. Take this example, a calculation in velocity. It's not very easy to understand what it is that you're doing within this calculation. One way to present this to others is to assign different values to variables and we can use a special notation for putting inline comments into the input to label that this represents time. We can now do the same thing with other parameters within our calculation, acceleration and initial velocity, and then enter the equation of motion that we're applying so we can see where each of these values come from in order to produce the final result. You can also use the full word processing capabilities and outlining system of the Mathematica notebook to add full explanatory text and that is covered in a different screencast. This ability to combine simple steps in a notebook turns the thousands of individual functions in Mathematica into a powerful, unified and open-ended problem-solving environment. But for more complicated problems, or to use Mathematica as a development environment, you will want to learn about the Mathematica programming language. And that too is introduced in a different screencast.